This is Amateur Faith Night, a podcast where real life friends talk about real life religion, where questions are encouraged, doubt is talked about, and following Jesus is our main priority. Let this be a starting place for you to research things and study them out for yourself. God is bigger than all of our questions, and it is okay to not have all of the answers. Okay, so episode two of Hair. Yes. Yeah, okay. Rumor has it people's toes better be watched out on. That's true. So I will say, disclaimer, um, the ideas that we're going to go through maybe not be very popular. Are you... Do you have the editing capabilities to put disclaimers on the bill of the videos? Yes, like I do. Little neat things. Like, I, I do have that. <laughs> those I'm capabilities. just saying you could try it out. So yeah. maybe just disclaimer. This might be offensive to some yeah. people. I, and truth be told, I have no idea what she's talking about. She just wanted to warn warn everybody. Yeah. Um. It's not really a warning. I. It's. It's very. It's just touchy. People get very um, offended very quickly about these kinds of topics, which I understand because it's offensive. And sometimes I will say straight up, sometimes I would like to not fall into the category of belief that I do. So, hmm. um, okay. That, all that all being said. <clears throat> so here we are in our second so series, second video of the series. Here. Um, so, we're going to kind of get more into the biblical portion of it this time. Last episode is kind of laying the groundwork. Um, plus, I had lost the very first episode we recorded, so it probably wasn't as put together as I would have liked it to be, but that's but okay. We're, you're, we're, all, we're back on a whole new video. We are, a whole new video that we got. We got the, it's recording. I checked twice or three times. <laughs> all right. So we are going to kind of dive right into first Corinthians chapter 11. Again, the whole premise of this topic is to just debunk the teachings of the UPC and kind of give it actual, what the actual meaning of it is from what I can decipher. Um, a lot of t- there's a lot of people smarter than me, obviously impossible i know but they've done a lot more research than i have um and i would say definitely incorporate those like mike winger's video um even though he doesn't really necessarily go through or mention the upci's stance on head covering coverings or hair in first corinthians 11 it is a valuable resource it has a lot of stuff in it about that um also as far as some of the topics tonight beth allison barr's book the making a biblical womanhood which i mentioned last episode i read that between episodes (laughs) right um great resource as far as looking into the historical context of women and um not necessarily in the bible but you know how we got to where we are in the church as far as um, complementarianism and legality, egalitarianism. And um, for those that may not know, why don't you explain the differences? I was about ready to. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, but thank you guys you. are so in tune. I know, right? Um, can I, well, can well, I make well, a motion? Instead of saying UPCI, can we just call it UPSI? Sure. Okay. <laughs> We'll, we'll do that for the remainder upsie. of this episode. For the remainder of the this upsie. episode, the UPCI upsie. is upsy. <laughs> I'm sure they would love that. <laughs> oh, well, right. I say UPCI, but now they really don't refer to themselves as that. They refer to themselves as apostolic Pentecostal. So honestly, they probably... Um, so then my idea is gone. Never mind. Yeah, You've crushed my dreams. I know. I'm sorry. All right. So anyway, back to complementarianism and egalitarianism. So complementarianism is the idea, which I actually did Google this so I could actually give like the proper definition. Um, It's a theological view in Christianity, Judaism, and Islam that men and women have different but complementary roles and responsibilities as far as marriage and family. So it is not what it is not. It's not patriarchal where women are allowed to be in leadership at all or hold jobs or be management, anything like that. Um, it is not supporting abusive situations. It is not supporting, um, it's it's very hard for me to explain. Yes, because I want to be an egalitarian, which is men and women are equal. The end, they don't have different roles. 
They just are. Um, which in our culture, that would be more mainstream. You know, that this, that might, that could be a different podcast because it's, I think I'm more compliment. I would rather be complimentary than egalitarian. Well, you're a dude. So there's that. I don't think there's anything wrong with compliment. You know? But that's the thing. And that's, and that's, that's so being a woman and being a lot of times on the opposite end of the abuse, not that I ever was by any means. Um, Jeremy does treat me well most of the time, but now season. Um, but it is like when you hear someone say that, you automatically go like, well, no, because, you know, that kind of, you you automatically have these men that are like, well, I'm in charge. I'm the head of the house. So whatever I say goes. And the women don't have a voice. And that's how abuse that's happens. That's not how I heard you that explain, though. I well, heard- exactly. 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 Um, but that's how but that's, a lot of people view it. Right. If they take it to the extreme. Right. Um, which is not biblical. That's that's not biblical. I, the biblical yeah. view of complementarianism is 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Ephesians chapter 5. Um, and it's actually a really beautiful thing. because, And honestly, once we break this down, um, I wouldn't want to be a guy. Because... Y- you guys have to love us unconditionally like as Christ loved the church. I know. <laughs> so. <laughs> and that can be so hard. I know, uh. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure. But, I mean, we, the women weren't given that command. Exactly. So. Not very just saying. Complimentary. <laughs> well, Paul said there is neither male nor female, hey. Jew or Greek. Well, exactly. So then you got to abide by that, too. Well, and that plays into it, too. But thank you for just, I don't know where you're going with that. No, he, I'm okay. just talking. He's no, going I mean, wherever he wants but that's to. Where, He's the guy. And that's the argument for egalitarianism. <laughs> <laughs> but there is no male or female, Jew or Greek, bond or free. Um, we, we are all yeah. one in Christ. However, when you start talking about being one in Christ, that's the Paul again talking about how the church works. Someone is the foot, someone is the hand, someone is the face or the eye or the ear or whatever, but we're all one. So, yes. We know who the butt is. I guess I'm more on the side of, yes, the saying of marriage, totally equal partners, but I 100% think that God, that man and woman have different roles and and that there's stuff that women are supposed to do and were created to do that I can't or men can't do and it's vice versa. So I think the roles work together. Yeah, and and they I work think, together. Yes, and I think that when they're biblical and they're applied and they are executed correctly. Um, it's like a harmonious yes, deal. Right? it is. And one isn't better than the other. Right. They're, they're both equal. 100%. And there's nothing wrong with saying that you have different roles when but one isn't higher than yeah, the other. Yeah, there's no level of importance on either one. It, 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 it's right. created as a purpose to work as a team. That, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think um, just a personal opinion as far as our culture today, I think that, that um, the... The, the desire to make it a that you know like a women can do everything a man could can or the men do this and that like I think that while that's true I think it's it's fractured it an intent that God put there that it's not there anymore and that's exactly what we're gonna talk about see Bingo. look at that you acted like you didn't know ding, 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 ding. <laughs> uh, were you okay. reading her notes hey you're recording this right because I don't know if I could say that sentence again on purpose oh, I sure hope so now you got me all, all right. paranoid um, no the green light's on so we're good alright cool okay um, alright so let's let's talk about this then so we're going to start by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11 um, but we are going to start with verse 3 but I want you to know that Christ is the head of every man and the man is the head of a woman and God is the head of Christ any man who prays or prophesies with his head covered disgraces his head but any woman okay wait my reading eye is actually on the side, so I can't. There we go. Couldn't see reading my phone. Eyes. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk well, about I that had, yeah, day. I had LASIK. It's a whole thing. Anyways. Um, She's got a false eye. It's plastic. It's cheap. Anyways, we're going to continue reading. And God is the head of Christ. Any man who prays or prophesies with his head uncovered disgraces his head. Any woman who prays or prophesies with her head 
uncovered disgraces her head for it is one and the same as having a shaved head for if a woman will not cover her head then she should cut off her hair but it is disgraceful for a woman to have her hair cut off or her head shaved that she should cover her head for a man should not have his head covered since he is the image and glory of god but the woman is the glory of the man for man did not come from woman but woman for man neither was the man created for the sake of woman but woman for man. For this reason, a woman should have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. In any case, in the Lord, women is not a woman is not independent of man, nor is a man independent of woman. For just as a woman came from man, so man comes through the woman. But all things come from God. Judge for yourselves. It is proper. For, is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not nature itself teach you if a man has long hair, it is a disgrace for him? For if a woman has long hair, it is her glory. Her hair is given to her for her covering. Okay, so say all that to say. Um, the way the UPCI obviously. Upsy. 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 The way Apostolic Pentecostal slash Upsy <laughs> interprets this chapter, it talks about, or they say that a woman's hair cannot ever be cut, right? Why? Because it is considered her covering. It is her glory. So they kind of twist that to mean all the time, every woman. Okay. So it's not just sometimes it's not just married women, all females, all females, all the time. However, the very first thing that I'm going to make sure that we kind of hammer out here is that Paul specifically says, specifically says when they pray or prophesy, so we're talking about church services, specific situations, specific situations um, as a group, generally speaking, because if men and women are together, that's probably a group setting um, is not all the time. So for starters, that's just obnoxious to think that this sh- you would have to wear a head covering or keep your hair uncut all the time. And also... In, I'm reading out of the net, but if we read in the ESV, woman is changed to wife and man is changed to the word husband because in the Greek, it can mean either or. So if we're looking at this logically, um, Paul's verbiage sounds a lot like Ephesians chapter five, when he says, wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and himself, its savior. Now the church submit to Christ. So also should wives submit and everything to their husbands. So Paul's laying out the harmonious complementarian marriage, you know, um, And he's even going on and before people can say, well, no, because, you know, like you said, there is neither male nor female, which I agree. However, he does go down to even say, let's see, in verse 11, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man, nor the man of the woman for the man or for the woman was made from man. So now the man is born of woman and all things are from God. So kind of like, okay, maybe if we're going to use the view complementarianism, we're going to assume the woman is the weaker sex. However, that's not really true either, because in that verse, he just says, just as much as the woman came from a man, the man comes from a woman. Now you kind of need us guys. So (laughs) it's like we work together. We're one in the same. And in the body of Christ, I think that's, that's really relevant too. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> so I think that's important to kind of keep in the front part of your mind when you're reading this chapter, because I think that's what the actual principle of this whole entire chapter is how, I mean, cr- the church of Corinth was in the middle of this city that was known for its debauchery, known for its sexual immorality. And that was bleeding over into the church. And, you know, he was saying, guys, that's not how this works. And we're going to show by using head coverings because that was prominent in that time, how the symbols of authority and how it actually works. And I think like I read in my study Bible, this really awesome thing, um, that they brought out, let's see, um, head in verse three seems to mean the role of authority or leadership through equal parts, such as the Trinity. The father has authority, but is equal deity with the son. So 
I think that's really beautiful when you talk about that and when you look at that, because it says in First Corinthians chapter 11 that the head of Christ is God. And, but yet we know that Jesus and the Father are one and the same. So it's just when a complementarian marriage plays out, it's like, it. I don't even, it's just how it's supposed to work. <laughs> well, I think the example would be, like you said, the father is the head of Christ or Jesus. So we, we see that, comp, say the word for me. Com, Complementarian. In the triune Godhead. Yeah, right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's awesome how Paul brought that around because he's like, this is how this is how it's supposed to work. And um, yeah, he's given ex uh, <clears throat> he's given an example the, of how. Yeah. Yeah. The perfect example up. of God. Right. Exactly. Um, I mean, we are made in God's image. And I think we've talked about before where the image is not necessarily a literal eyes ears hands and you know not image but just this encompassing you know we're the image of god so god being a kind of a trifecta there even complementing himself with different uh roles mm -hmm. he's done it with mankind also to where yes men and women have their strengths and weaknesses but it's all set in place to where we f like men fill the the quote-unquote weaknesses that women have and women fill the weaknesses that men have to where mm. right. if you're if you're you if you're doing what we're supposed to right the, the, if we're doing this right the bible says that the husband is supposed to love his wife like christ loved the church and 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 in that if that yeah if you're actually loving your wife in that manner you're not going to abuse her you're going to treat her like royalty, like we're the bride of Christ that the church is, right? So if you're the man, that's how you're going to treat your wife. And if you're treating your wife like that, with that level of love and admiration, then it's really hard for the wife to be like, well, pff, you know, I don't respect you, right. you know? It's, so it, it, it gives, let, it allows her to submit like the scripture implies without feeling like she's like some kind of slave or something. Exactly. Sub it's, exactly. It's a, it's, Cause it's not submission yeah, as in a, do as I say, right. everything, like it's everything a, I say goes. It's a level of faith. Right. It's putting well, my I trust mean, into we, someone. We see scripture and some people get tripped up on this, but we see scripture where Jesus submitted to the father. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that Jesus is less than the father. Right. They're co-powerful or whatever the word would be. I think one of the problems too is you have a culture not that latches on to these kind of buzzwords and some scripture to where it's like I ain't submit to no man because or, or vice versa right. you know the guys like why would I want to do this for my you know they they hone in on out of context things just to point to how out of touch you know, a 2000 year old Bible or words are like, mm -hmm. why would you submit to a guy, you know, or why would you, whatever it is, they're, they're picking, they're cherry picking words to kind of pick on without understanding the point behind it all. Right. And I mean, they have valid reason because there are a lot of men, especially men in power who will use their power yeah, to abuse be abusive. It. Yeah. And that's wrong. That's right. not how complementarianism works right. at all. Um, and I, yeah, it just, anyways, um, I, I feel like when I read this chapter before, when I was in the, what were we calling it? Upsy? Upsy. <laughs> when I was upsy. <laughs> the app upsy. Um, the idea of this beautiful coexistence of marriage and Christ and the church and the father, Got overlooked. Yes. It was never, ever brought out. It was always about hair. And it was always about how the length of your hair was important and how there was power on your head because of your hair, um, which we're definitely going to get into that verse. I got a question. This is just me thinking. So this verse gives power to the hair and is like this very woman empowering type idea. Was the Upsy, were they a very 
don't question your husband, like fall in line type thing. That's interesting that you say that because some people were, but some people weren't. The UPCI actually, or UPSI, was <laughs> when, from my experience, I honestly did not know that women not being in ministry or being allowed in ministry was a thing until we left because there were women, there are women ministers, so, they're licensed so it wasn't, ministers. It wasn't like a male. You just fall in line and listen to what we have to say. I think a lot of it would have to depend on your your local pastor. Mm -hmm. If the pastor rules his household like that, it's going to bleed over the church. And I think a lot of the men will then try to rule their households the same. Right. But the thing is, too, a lot of it is pastor worship. So whatever your pastor yeah. says, that's what goes. And just, he's the head. I'm just curious because that is, you know, if Which you're, he's not if you're given at all. Right. You're right. If exactly. you're given um, th that much power to the hair in this verse it seems like it's a very a woman empowering type of you know yeah so they very quality they very much put emphasis on the power of the woman because they're like well you know we have something that the men don't have we have this power on our heads which ironically um power is in verse 10 of the kjv for this cause ought the woman have to have power on her head because of the angels. However, if you read it in the net, um, it does not say that. It says a woman should have a symbol of authority on her head. So that could be a tiara. Right. Exactly. Or a head covering, as it actually is talking about. Um, but again, the symbolism is in the item Paul's talking about, but the principle of the matter is how things are played out in your church and your marriage, you know, just how things should be done decently and in order, as Paul says in another chapter. So I think that later we're going to get into the Greek words for, for this, but if you're looking at it from the sake of this is about head coverings, which it is the covering of the, you know, um, that doesn't necessarily apply to us today because we don't have that in our culture where a head covering would be symbolic of me being married to my husband and right. being under his authority. Um, we have wedding rings. So, but I mean, you can't sit here and say, cause we had this discussion, you have mm -hmm. to wear your wedding ring in church. I mean, that would just be silly. Um, it's just not in our culture, but I think that pulling out the, the main, idea here is way more important than the actual hair or head coverings. Um, also it's, I just want to make note that this is not a salvific issue. This is not, this is not something that, you know, if your hair is short and you're a woman, this is not something that like, <laughs> it's not going to send you to hell. It's not going to, you know, you're not any less, of you're a not any less of a Christian. You're not. If this is, anyways. Doesn't mean you can't absorb seeing it. It doesn't, <laughs> right? Exactly. It doesn't mean that you're not submitting to your husband. And if you've not seen the first episode, go back and yeah, watch that it. Yeah, that was a <laughs> random. Complete I was realizing my guys are totally, that was a callback. <laughs> we like to call in the industry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyways. Mm. So I think the importance of this chapter is that. And I think it's also important to note that Paul was putting like making sure there was a difference between the, the husbands and the wives. So I think in today's culture, yeah, we don't like to say that they have to have a specific look. And this is where this kind of like gets my goat, so to speak, because it was upsy at one point and I don't want people telling me how I need to look or dress or wear my hair. I, that's like, mm, no, you're not going to do that. However, I do think it's important to look feminine. I think that's embracing your God given role. I feel like if you're going to, you know, be in submission and be in this specific order that God intended. I think that you need to project that. Um, you need to own it. You do. And so culturally speaking right now in this year where we're living, I mean, there are certain clothes that you can wear. I'm not saying you have to wear a dress. Dear God, I'm not saying that at all. Wear your jeans, please for the love. But like you can dress like a woman, you can dress feminine. You can, you know, everyone, well, no, that you're a lady, <laughs> you know, like there's a way that guys can dress to look more masculine. And I'm not saying that 
everyone has to dress a certain way. You can have your own vibe, you know, but as long as you are projecting that from your heart, like I feel like that's the entire point of this chapter. That's the entire point. And when we're arguing and bickering about hair length and cut or uncut or what, you know, the Greek word for cover means, um, we're missing out on like the bigger picture of what this actually is implying and what this, the actual principle of this entire chapter is. And that's gender roles. And I know that's the unpopular opinion. I almost hate to even use it, but at the same time, I do think that is important for God. I think in the Bible, it's very clear to me that it is important to have general gender distinction. And so anyway, I, Mike Winger said something that kind of caught my attention and I fact checked him on it and I did not come to the same conclusion that he came to actually. Um, when he said that, um, talking about the verse that says, does not nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a disgrace for him. So he said that he, in his research, he found that uh, men's hair, if I'm quoting him correctly, I may be wrong, but from what I understood, he was saying that men's hair grows at a slower rate, maybe not as thick and full as women in general. I didn't really find anything to support that in my research, but um, I did find out that it grows at the same rate, but it grows in different direction depending on your gender. So where men's hair will like grow straight forward, like from the crown of your head, women's hair kind of just goes, flows in a backwards direction away from your face. So I did find that kind of interesting. So yeah, if a man has long hair, it's just going to go directly and growing, you know, <laughs> obviously, unless you style it where naturally a woman's hair is just going to go back. So I did kind of feel like that was interesting. Plus you factor in like male pattern baldness. It's kind of like, hey, eh, wait a second. you know, <laughs> doesn't nature teach you? Like, <laughs> so I could come and see where he would say that because, you know, nature sometimes is unfortunate how many genders did paul mention <laughs> how many genders did he yeah. mention yeah <laughs> just, I just, uh, I don't know, start another argument mm -hmm. right exactly so anyway that was um kind of what i wanted to get into any final thoughts or add anything hey let's uh just keep the chat going uh, put some comments and in the comments section, whether you feel that you're egalitarian or the other word that I can never say. That's complementarian. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Be nice about it, though. Hey, we all have our own opinions, and you have the right to be wrong. If, oh dear God. We do, oh. no, I can't believe you just said that. We do not think that way at all. Um, it's, I think it's... I can see both sides, personally. I can, I can see both sides. And I have friends that are on both sides of the fence here. And the fact that you know, complementarianists usually don't believe that women can be in ministry or in leadership. Um, it's just weird because I, I, I know we just talked about all this, but I, I, I look at the complementary as, as like a, the way like a positive like thing, like a positive thing. thing. Yeah. yeah right. That's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't put any more specific importance on a man or a woman in it, but they fill each other's void basically and create mm -hmm. a whole sum of something. Right. Right. Well, I had someone bring to my attention to, um, one of my friends, he's from another country, um, not the U S and he said in his culture, there's a lot of women ministers and a lot of women pastors because the women are esteemed in his culture because a lot of times the, the husbands or the dads will be either working all the time or, or just take off in general. It's not really a good family unit, unfortunately in that area. And so the grandmas and the moms raised their kids. And so they're, they're more esteemed than the men. They're just like put in that position naturally in their culture. And, um, you know, he brought up a good point. He's like, well, where do we stand on that? And you can't expect the same rules to apply to the same culture. And I, I agree. I tend to agree with that. Um, we don't understand it in this culture. And there are some things that transcend culture. And there are some things that I feel like are a cultural issue. And I feel like as maybe the principles work, like I said, maybe head coverings are one of those things that are more cultural. Um, as far as women in ministry, that's a whole other topic. 
that I'm probably never going to want to dive into. <laughs> In all fairness, Jennifer and I have said very many times that we feel that the UPSI organization uh, was very progressive early on mm-hmm. with the allowing of women in, in leadership mm-hmm. roles. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I didn't realize it was a huge issue until after we had left, um, which is crazy to me as backwards as they are with other things that they really weren't. But anyway, that again, I don't quite know where I land on that. I don't really want to give my opinion because I don't know. But anyways, um, so next episode, I really want to get into the Greek words for um, all of these words that get kind of twisted in the UBC's definition. Um, just kind of kind of pull back on that fear because what what you've been taught is is um grossly incorrect unfortunately in most situations Ew, so gross. i know i know untangle the lies like um, your nappy hair also we're going to get into the verse that says because of the angels which that is a huge issue um it's we, where the upc draws their power and we will bring you the answer that we've asked several times and it is what would you do with the corinthian sailor that <laughs> will be revealed in the next episode, next episode. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys like and subscribe even though my kids hate it when we say that but please do where please are the do. buttons where all are right they? they're gonna be down here down yeah. here all right <laughs>